Okay, take two, same day. <clears throat> now, we've talked about when we have a straight line, everything's nice and linear, or at least close enough that we can claim it, but what happened when it's not? So, we learn to analyze it based on a linear pattern. Okay, but sometimes we have curves. And as we have curves, what we're going to have to do is what's called linear transformation to linear lot, to linear eyes, to make those curves straight. Considering I couldn't, can't be articulate right now. Okay, so as you can see here, we're going to be using logs and square roots to linearize or straighten out a nonlinear pattern. And these techniques, um, basically we're going to be, like I said, doing logs again, but um, it's not as bad as you think. So let's remind ourselves of a couple of things. Okay, we have a power model. It looks like this, but the value of A and P are constant. And when we're doing, um, when we have these models right here, it can look like this in which we're going to raise the, um, raise the, it can look like this, in which we're going to raise the value of x, you know, as we are in algebra mode right now. Or it can also take um, a fractional power of y or a root of y, because remember, fractional power and a root is the same thing. Now, I just wanted to show you a piece uh, just go into math mode for a second and see how you how the problem would look for you. So if I'm giving you something like this, and if you're given a computer printout, which you will be, okay, and I'm just here's generically, here is the um just some numbers I just randomly came up with. And I wanna say that I'm gonna linearize this with that square root and then say, okay, make a prediction. Well, I'm just going to say let's predict when um, x is 4. Remember this, we're in total math mode right now. You take it, plug it in, you see that y is going to equal to 14, and how do you solve for y? Well, what's the opposite of a square root? You square it. The inverse, I should say, of a square root, you square it. And then you're going to get 1, yes, that's a 9, 196. Okay, next. Okay, so I used um, just the regular old inverse method of a, a square root, but sometimes we have to use logs or a power model. So it's not like we're going to always use logs and not like we're going to always use power. Um, when we get together, we're going to talk about, well, how do I know what to, to use when? And actually, in a few minutes, we are also. Okay, but... The bottom line here, another potential one, is an exponential model. And as the exponential model, you can see it looks just like this right here, y equals ab to the x. But when we do this to linearize it, all that we're going to be affecting is our output. We're going to be affecting the, um, the value of y our, in our dependent variable. Please remember, this is for logs and also natural logs. Now, I know you're a little bit confused right now. So let's do some math, and then let's get into some statistics. So here, let's say that you're given an output, and this is the equation. First of all, what your graph is going to look like is going to look like something like this. So you'll have whatever is here for your... Um, independent variable and your dependent variable and they'll even yes have the word um, log natural log whatever is applicable and since it's a natural log that's here and that's also here so again I have linearized the data by using this equation and when I've done it here now I'm gonna say make a prediction so to make a prediction and I'm saying, in this case, what did I make? I made x equal to 2. Why not? Again, just do, I'm in math mode right now. So, so I take it, I plug it in, I do the math here, 
And once I've done that math right here, it's going to give me that value. Now, let's remind ourselves of how I do a conversion. Remember, the number that's down here is our, in this case, this is a natural log. Remember, that's base E. So that's E to that power is going to equal that Y. And that's where this comes from, E to that power as I convert it from a natural log to an exponential function. And here, remember, we're just going to put this in our calculator. Find the E button. Don't find the blue E button. Find the orange E button. And here, I'm going to go E. Nope, I should have pressed um, second E. And then I just go 0 0.26974. And then it gave me that answer. Did I key something in wrong the first time or the last time? But I need to change my answer because I don't see any error that I did there. Now I want to jump into a problem. We're going to skip problem 32 on page 12, and then we're going to jump into problem 34. You know what? Let me think about this for a second. Sorry, changed my mind. Go ahead and read this, Boyle's Law. And as you put this in the calculator, and if you don't feel like it, it's okay. I can just give you the scatter plot because it's not like you can't print things out. So you can save yourself some time. This is what the printout's going to be. And as you see that, you see how that thing looks curved? That thing's not linear by any stretch of the imagination. So what we're going to do is they're going to try some things to linearize this. So the first thing they want us to do is here they're trying to figure out which of these, go ahead and read this, but go ahead and figure out which of these will um, theoretically be the best model. So like I said, pause and do this please. Okay, welcome back. Now, right here you can see and I should have written it up here. As I mentioned, this thing is curved. Yeah, I should have mentioned this negative. And yeah, it's pretty strong. I mean, it, it really does look like um, some type of exponential decay. That's what it looks like. Okay, but they're asking us which model, which of these models to use. So please notice what's happening here. They tell us it's the pressure, and then they tell us the x value is 1 over the volume. So that means that I'm going to be using the reciprocal of the volume, which is this one right here. And it is that simple, at least given that we are going to be given a, considering that we're going to be given a, a drawing. Okay, now let's look at part C, and they're asking the same question. Notice they've got volume, and don't be concerned because they've got cubic measure because everything's in cubic measure. And here they're talking about your output is going to be 1 over P. So yes, we are going to be using the reciprocal of the P, which is the reciprocal of the pressure. Okay, so in stats one, we're only concerned that you can recognize which one to use. But it is a little bit more that after we've recognized which one to use, they're going to give us residual plots um, and other things to make equations to help us make predictions. Okay, so let's continue looking at number 34. Now, transformation A is 1 over the volume pressure. That's your x and that's your y, which we said was applicable on the drawing. Here is your output. Here is your residual. And notice what's happening on your residual plot of this new one. This thing still does not look very good. It still looks like a, it doesn't look scattered enough. But we're going to continue going and answer their questions. Okay, so they say give the equation. So you see what I'm doing here. I've got my slope. 
I've got my y-intercept, but here's the difference. Here, they are claiming right here that our value for x is going to be represented as 1 over, again, x. Okay? So now all I'm going to do is answer the next question. They say what to do when I have the value of 17 as our predictor. All I'm going to do is take it and plug it in. But after I've plugged it in, I still have to... Actually, no, I'm done. All I've got to do is go straight into math mode. I didn't do it here, but make sure, make sure you have defined your x and defined your y hat. I want to keep going here. We already established that this one's not very good, very good transformation. Because again, it's all still about the residuals, like it was in the past. It not have it being scattered, no curvature pattern. So now for transformation two, we have our volume versus our pressure, one over our pressure. Here is our printout. Here, ah, look at this residual. This residual is much better. And I have missed every point, haven't I? Finally. Oh, wow. Okay, now here we're going to use this equation. We have here. And they said, okay, the same premise. They want us to make the prediction on 17, which takes us to the next page. And we have the equation. We plug it in. Now, as we have this, we've got to solve for, after we've found this value, again, math mode for a moment, do the math. But now, we still haven't solved for y. You know you have to cross-multiply. And once you cross-multiply, you get to the 1.287 atmospheres. Now, I want to stop for now. But if I had to choose which of those models were the better model, it would be transformation, transformation 2. So transformation 2 would be a better model to use as a predictor. And the reason is because, as we go back to that prior page, that residual was so nicely scattered. And because it was so nicely scattered, we're saying, OK, fine. I can use this as a predictor once you have linearized it with this equation. So. Enjoy, enjoy the rest of your day after you finish doing your homework. Have a great rest of the weekend. Bye-bye.